Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to find out how you can make this year's holiday season a success with automation and to a certain degree also with artificial intelligence. Now to dive into that, Mark Simon uh, is with me on the show. Mark is the VP of strategy at Celigo.com. With over a decade of experience, Mark is an expert in guiding companies through digital transformation. Starting as a software developer, he rose to CTO of a thriving e-commerce startup. And then Mark led professional service at Explore Consulting, overseeing digital initiatives for more than 200 e-commerce companies. Now at Sedigo, he continues to drive success for clients in their digital journeys. So let's welcome Mark to the show. Hi, Mark. How are you today? I'm doing great. Uh, great to meet you, Klaus. And uh, it's it's an honor to be here. Thank you. I, I, lo I love talking about... Uh, e-commerce and growing companies uh and and what you know what we see in the market and 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 what what leads them to be more successful than others we we see a lot of this every day every day at Saligo and and it's you know honestly a fun topic yeah let's start quite broad there and i saw on your website you just issued a survey that details 2024 shopping trends so based on your survey results what are the top 2 3 online shopping trends that retailers should prioritize in this holiday season yeah, great, great place to start. You know, one of the things we see there is, you know, customers are looking for a, an enhanced uh, customer experience. This is this is a bit of a, a a snapback from from the pandemic, honestly, where we saw a big explo explosive growth in e-commerce, and at a certain point, just having product to sell, having it in stock, and being able to get it out the door, get it online was enough but we see customers really returning to that that concept of of seeking out a good experience and so a good customer experience is in a is a real differentiator right now um and you know what we saw is that 85 percent of of shoppers that we surveyed had one to three poor what they consider poor or very poor experiences with online retailers last year and that's that's important because when they have that a poor experience they're, they're likely not to go back um and that investment made in acquiring that customer is is gone essentially mm -hmm. no very true i mean most companies or a lot of companies do not make any kind of profit on the first sale it happens later on in the customer journey customer lifetime value now when it comes to automation, a growing company always has pain. It's not the easiest <laughs> choice to find the right system, to have the right strategy going there. What's your approach? Well, what do you see with smaller companies that are on a growth path and come to the next level? What are they struggling with? That's that's a, a, another excellent question. This is something that, that's coming up, uh, that comes up, you know, quite frequently for us because we're often engaged at Saligo. We're, we're an what, what's called an integration platform as a service. Uh, it's actually another acronym I passed that, that let's be honest, none of us need another tech acronym in our lives. But uh, uh, it, it it's a it, what used to be called middleware, and but it, we're a modern version of that. We're a modern cloud-based version of an integration tool to connect systems. And so very often, our customers are bringing us in because they've struggled to scale as an organization. They're at a key inflection point. So very often we see organizations starting out with uh, getting in, particularly you know, that are majority e-commerce or others that maybe they're they're coming into e-commerce, they're new to e-commerce, but they're well established. They often start out you know, with uh, you know. You know, Shopify is by far the most common e-commerce platform we see, both for for starting e-commerce companies and ones that are more more mature as well and more established. But they have to get started with with platform because you can get that get your hang out your shingles, so to speak, and get your revenue moving very quickly. But they often don't have the behind the scenes infrastructure set up to to really scale yet and that makes sense right you need to test a uh, product market fit can you drive can you drive uh, customers to your to your site to your channel will this work for you can you get the margins you need to be successful all make sense to proof those out before you build out that back a lot of that back end infrastructure but we see those customers here they start things start to take off you get the, that revenue flowing through and you can't grow to that next level and typically i mentioned customer experience earlier you see it really reflected there and showing and in, in breakdowns in customer experience and so these companies these growing e-commerce companies start adding in really the first point we see is them starting with often a modern uh erp solution or an order management system. And as soon as they start down that path, really, and really that's the first step to true digital transformation, they bring in an 
integration solution at that point. So that's where we get introduced. And then we would kind of work with them to set them on the on a, on a multi-step path to automation. Mm -hmm. Now, in e-commerce business, you have your plan, you have your marketing plan, your growth plan, but normally it does not go to plan. Things happen. So of a course. smaller business might be an overnight success and need to scale very, very quickly, or you just grow very, very slowly. What are the sort of the milestones? What you think is when do I need to think about automation? And you already mentioned where to start with, but what would kind be of process steps to really follow a, a safe path there? Yeah, really, you should be thinking about automation constantly. It should be a a, a, a thought that's at the, at the forefront as a leader in, a, in really any growing organization, but especially in an e-commerce organization, because the, the competition is is so intense there. So we, we often talk to our customers and prospects about this in terms of shifting to to what we'll call an automation first mentality. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very common that you're, you you're building out your organization and you're growing and you're you're launching these new go-to-market initiatives and maybe you're launching in, in a new marketplace or, or, or a new sales channel or launching in a new country or, or you've, you've, you're selling a new product line and then you wait until you have pain points in the organization, very often negative impacts to that customer experience. We're back to there again. And, and when you do a root cause analysis on those, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, this data is moving too slowly from my fulfillment center back up where our customer service team can access it, where we can get it proactively in front of the customer, mm -hmm. or even worse, it's inaccurate. Often it's slow and inaccurate. And then you break down and you say, oh, we need some automation or new automation here. Now that's that gets you on the path, but that is often too slow. And where the automation first comes in is shifting the thinking so that you're like, oh, we're we're touching this system, we're fixing this process. And the first question the team can ask, and this doesn't have to be a technical person. This this is really best asked by a business leader. Any business leaders, can we automate that? And just start posing that question more. And that's a really it's it's a way to just shift the mentality. Um and we see companies that adopt that approach doesn't mean you automatically automate it, but it's it, the team is thinking about it more and it tends to press in and that the result tends to be those those companies end up finding more opportunities to automate early and they head off those problems. And it's actually easier to do that earlier in, in the process before before a process is fully built out and in flight, so to speak. Uh, and it gives these companies a significant advantage and things tend to run smoother. That customer experience is better. Data flows, in, the employees internally have a better experience, not only just the customer. And we see that being, a, and, and it, that becomes a significant competitive advantage for a lot of e-commerce companies. Mm -hmm. When it comes to integration, I mean, making the decision to go into automation is one thing, but putting into place completely different thing. You say data flows, every supplier out there for any kind of software solutions that will say, oh, we have an API and you can get all the data there. But getting all these bits and pieces together to make, make it a working system it needs a lot of experience, expertise, technical know-how and putting it in place. And I think that's where, where you come in. How do you help your customers on that journey? Uh, yes, and that's really a key, key point. Uh, in, in that, and that's for us is really how our philosophy as a company and as an integration platform is different. So you mentioned the difficulty of building out those integrations traditionally, and that might traditionally that might be done via you've, you've got a, a team of developers uh, in in your organization, and they're actually coding up integrations between those those APIs and moving the data. Well, that's that's kind of the the old school. And, mm -hmm. and for the most part, I think of that as a little bit of the Stone Age. Uh, and then but then we had some more modern. We, we had the first generation of, of integration platforms, some more legacy tools that came. And those were still developer oriented tools, meaning that to be successful right. using them, you had to be a software engineer. You had to be a developer. And I've seen this firsthand. I've had a team uh, in my consulting background. I had a team using one of those legacy platforms and also using Soligo. And my projects on a legacy iPaaS were 80% developers, 20% business analysts. Mm -hmm. And then leveraging Soligo, we were 80% business analysts and 20% developers, but the projects were smart. We did the same amount of work more quickly, faster, and importantly, 
in a more agile fashion. Uh, and so that's really important as companies look at this. E-commerce can says, well, I, I want to automate. Well, make sure you're using the best tool set for the job because this this is very much used to be the realm of the, the developer. Now, you should still you should pick a tool that gives you power with with a good, really good user interface and the ability to bring in more of your, your business users in the organization. Um, doesn't mean you won't need developers. It means you just need less of their work and it's smaller. You don't need a senior of one so uh, or less experience. Someone with maybe an MIS background instead of a team of, of, of experienced computer scientists. Very different. Very different from a cost standpoint. Um, and whether you're doing it in-house or you're using, say, an agency or a consulting firm or an MS managed services provider for you, the cost goes down, relatively speaking. You can move faster. Um, and so by selecting a modern platform, Form, you can go faster. And then on top of that, it, it's Celigo, we've actually taken this further. So not just having a not just having a, a broad integration platform that connect anything to anything, we've looked at our customer base and said, hey, what are the things that are happening most? And one of them, for example, is is we have uh we have a lot of customers that are that are selling on one or more e-commerce channels. Um, specifically, you know, the biggest one is Shopify. And so we said, hey, everyone that's selling on Shopify and has NetSuite to the leading uh, mid-market uh, a SaaS ERP, we say, hey, everyone that's that's using Shopify and NetSuite, we can pre-build all the integrations. We can have it pre-built. So it's, and there's a lot of point-to-point -point out of the box things, but those tend to be in a box, but you get that flex, that speed and time to value with a platform that when you outgrow something and say, well, I'm going to do it differently because it's a business advantage. That's fine. You can do, you can leverage our platform. So you really get, our, our goal is to give you that quick time to value, but also the flexibility of using what we consider more legacy approaches and bring those together in, in one spot. And that's really kind of, uh, you know, our secret sauce to give you that power with that quick time to value. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about timing. Um, we started with talking about the this year's holiday season and to make that a success with automation. If you're a good marketeer, um, you're months ahead of what you're actually doing. Um, okay. So we're looking at to Q4, we look at Cyber Monday, Black Friday, all of these things. What is a, a typical timeline or what would be your recommendation in looking into automation right now? And what are sort of the homework that the merchant needs to do before they get get, get started. Yeah, and, and really now is you, you should you should have started already, but you can still catch up. That's that's what I would say to your listeners. <laughs> There's still uh as we all know, we get into we get into September and a lot of companies go into to code freezes, both for their from an e-commerce standpoint and into their business systems to make sure that they're um, they're locked down and ready to go, whether they go into that, you know, I, I see some going into that at the end of the, uh, August. I see a lot of others, you know, certainly by, by mid October, things, things are locked up depending on the philosophy of an organization. So that means that you really need to get thinking and planning about this right now. And specifically to that planning is looking at and, and asking yourself, really stepping back and looking at your, your, your top line business goals from last holiday season or your last peak, like, did you achieve your goals? Uh, yes or no? And and you might have had KPIs for customer experience and satisfaction and in re in your your revenue, your your margins, for example. Uh, you might have had top line KPIs for all of those, getting down into you know detailed uh, information on on the the customer experience. But you might not, and that's okay. You might just have you might just be like, hey, we didn't hit our our revenue goals and and, and margin goals. Uh, last year to the holiday season, but simply doing a, a, a good, thoughtful root cause analysis of those, why you didn't hit those goals will, if you break those apart, I, I guarantee just about everyone will find that a substantial, there's a substantial number of root causes pointing back to uh, a lack of automation in the organization or a lack of, of quality in the automation so that the data moving around either you don't have data that's that's moving in an automated fashion or you have it that is and maybe it is moving but it's not accurate it's broken it's not working right so if you do those root that root cause analysis you'll come back often and almost every single time with multiple areas that you know where you can improve through but higher quality automation and now is really the time to to be doing that work because at on the at Saligo, we can help reduce the effort involved in the nuts and bolts 
of that integration. And in the case of where we have our, our accelerator products, our integration applications, we actually can provide a, a viewpoint on, because we have uh, a thousand customers that we're integrating to Shopify, we can bring a viewpoint of, hey, here are the best practices that we see. And we've actually implemented from a process perspective. But the larger you are, the more, or the more specialized you are as a, as a um, online seller, the more it is likely it is that you're going to have some unique business processes. And with those unique business processes, th that, those are going to be a little different. And with that, you might need to redesign how some of your processes work internally as an organization to take that next level, to improve those, to, to improve your outcomes, to hit your business objectives. And that's going to take a little bit more work. So you that's why you want to make sure you start now with a really good analysis so you can identify where's the process work that's, where are we lacking in process, and then implement a new or improved process from an automation perspective. And it's those tying those things together that will really lead to success. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of companies right now, brands out there are busy right now in rethinking their process steps when it comes to implementing AI. And yes. how much does AI factor into automation for online retailers? AI is so interesting right now because you know over a year ago, with the advance in the in the large language models and and the new the new Gen AI tools out there, all of a sudden everyone's thinking about it and seeing these new capabilities. But for the majority of companies, it really hasn't had a tangible impact beyond some kind of basic, what I call kind of co-pilot accelerators. And, mm -hmm. and now uh, whether it's literally using Microsoft's co-pilot for some day-to-day -day, uh, tools or, mm -hmm. or using, uh, say, uh, chat GPT to, to help you write marketing copy, for example, it, it, it's helped on the, on the periphery, but it hasn't really fundamentally changed the core of a lot of organizations. And the reason for that is because in order to take advantage of new AI tools, whether you're working with things directly like, like chat GPT behind the scenes, using the open AI APIs to, to, you know, build essentially internal AI enhancements to your system stack or your product stack. What, what you have to do is your, your, your data has to be in good shape beforehand, meaning you have to have high confidence that you have ac reasonably accurate data and good ways to identify when it's not accurate because AI is just another tool in the automation toolbox. It's the shiny, bright one that has an amazing future uh, ahead of us uh, for, for all of us, but you have to apply that tool in a way that you, you're you you're now accelerating automation with AI. And if you start with bad data, you're just, you're going to get automated garbage. And that's really the trick. A lot of companies struggle with that, especially smaller companies. That's natural. Larger ones do, but you have to be working and make sure you've got the automation in place in your organization, that you've got the data connected, that you're, you're making sure it's clean, that you've you have some assur assurance that you're working with that good set of data in order to apply the AI. And that's what, that's what we see is really the biggest blocker right now. Mm -hmm. I, I love the term automated garbage. I've never heard that before, but I think that's what's happening in a lot of organizations, yep. as you mentioned. So who's your perfect customer? Oh, who's our perfect customer? Wow, you know, uh, a, a fantastic customer that I think of that comes to mind immediately is... Uh, is is purple is is the mattress company so mm -hmm. um super cool um a customer that's done uh, fantastic things leveraging our product over a number of years throughout their their explosion as a company you know explosive growth as a company um and they they have a team that leverages uh Soligo that that uses Soligo to help accelerate the business and and that's you know example of someone that's that's a vertically vertically integrated uh, manufacturer, um, you know, on, driven by online sales um, and le leveraging automation in Sligo specifically to, to, to fuel that automation very successfully. Mm -hmm. Walk me through a typical onboarding process for a new client. What steps are involved? How long does it take? Um, you know, that really, that, that I hate to say it, this sounds like a real consultant. Center. Well, it just depends. 
Uh, we see everything from, you know, if, if a company is coming in and they already have the systems up and running, that's a big thing. Do you have your, your e-commerce platform up and running already? So is Shopify up and running for you? Uh, is, the, is your Amazon store up and running? Great. So if, if Shopify is up and running for you, you've got a head start and, and specifically running the way that you want. You're happy relatively with how that's functioning. And then do you have your other systems up and running? Is your, is your, your uh, order management system, whether that's a ERP like Microsoft Business Central or or Acumatica or uh, it could be, you know, a, you know, an SAP product, whatever it is, is that up and running and already implemented? If so, that means your processes are already working, your date, your you, your items, masters, for example. For example, already figured out that may that means from that means you'll have a much quicker implementation. We see some companies coming in and getting say their their Shopify ERP integration up and running in in a matter of days. Um, if if they're using one of our our accelerating uh, products or integration applications, they get that going up very very quickly if they have those business processes defined already. If not, we remove the the technical part of the integration, the mapping and actually wiring the systems together, we make that as easy as possible, but you still have to do that business process work and make sure your endpoints are implemented. So those are often the biggest questions like, oh, are you ready? Well, if you're not ready, you're gonna have to do that first. And then we can get this down to days or weeks, something that might've otherwise taken, you know, might've been measured in months before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. So how does your pricing structure work? So our pricing structure is based off of really what you're kind of how, how many systems you're connecting to, mm -hmm. um, how many, how much data you're moving back and forth in the types of data we think in on in from an integration standpoint we think of this as flows. So a flow might be taking your sales orders from Shopify and bringing them into your your ERP or OMS. Another flow would be bringing uh the updates to the, those orders when they've been fulfilled fulfilled with tracking information bringing that up. That's an example of two two flows bringing your inventory information upstream into Shopify. That's a third flow. So your number of flows and how many systems you're connecting to really determine uh, the the pricing of our platform, uh, and then uh, it goes from there. If you need additional platform features that are more enterprise oriented, well, we have an enterprise uh, uh, offering for our platform that that starts at uh, seventy two thousand dollars. That has some of the things that, that customers are looking for, um, and and for comparable enterprise pro products, that's a very disruptive price. And then we also have uh, much much lower end solutions. Uh, if you're looking to just connect, start very simple, very small, and only connect two systems with three or four flows, we can get you up and running for for a fraction of that price, really down at the price point that's comparable to some point-to-point -point black box solutions. So we really mm -hmm. give you give customers kind of that full spectrum, knowing that someone might be starting this automation journal and only has two or three million dollars of revenue, perhaps. So we we have a lot of customers on that end. And well, at the same time, we're working with Fortune 50 companies as well to automate their integration processes around e-commerce. Mm -hmm. I think a big advantage is that you as a brand, as a DTC brand, you can grow with Celigo. Um, the bigger you become, you don't have to change the system at some point. You just can grow with you guys and uh, the system grows as you grow. Before we come to the end of the coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? I think... Um... The only thing I wouldn't say it's something that I haven't shared, but I'd come back to to that automation first concept. And that's really the thing that everybody listening can can take away from this and use to start changing your organization and shifting to that automation first culture. Just ask when you're sitting in a meeting, you're talking about something new and you don't hear be like, oh, can we automate that? How can we automate? Shift shift the conversation a little bit. Just pose, start posing that question. Uh, and that's where we start to see that's where you as a as a listener as a as a leader in an e-commerce company can start to accelerate your digital transformation as a company mm -hmm. yeah i think it's a mindset thing um exactly. once you're in the right mindset then automation becomes much much easier where can people find out more about you guys you know best place to go is seligo.com that is c e l i g o.com 
Um, you can also follow us on on their uh, you know, LinkedIn, social media. Um, we're we're on all those usual places. But but come to our uh, website, check out what what we do, and you can really get a get a sense of of what we do for you know. Uh, you know, we have thousands of e-commerce companies that are our, our, our part of our customer base. So this is really, uh, you know, in a way, e-commerce, uh, automating e-commerce business processes is uh, our bread and butter. This is where we've really started as an organization and grew out of. Uh, and so, you know, we love to to help companies um you know, achieve that vision of an automated business and be more efficient. And we can get, we can help give you a roadmap how to get there. You know, say, I don't know where to start. That's great. We can help you. Oh, I don't know what to in integrate first. We can help you because we can show you, hey, what, what have successful companies done? Okay, perfect. I will put the links in the show notes. Then you just one click away. And I would recommend to our listeners, if you're growing, reach out to Mark and his team to get your own roadmap. Mark, thanks so much for your time. It was very interesting. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Klaus. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.